Hey folks, Adam Bazalgett back here in Naples, Florida. I want to talk to you today about the golf swing of Ricky Fowler. I've won the PGA Teacher of the Year Award down here twice and worked for David Ledbetter for a long time. Hopefully I can give you a few insights as to what makes it good, so stay tuned. So as we look at Ricky Fowler here in just a moment, I'm going to show you a couple of things I think are great, a couple of things you might apply to your game, and I'm going to come back at the end of the video and give you a drill or two that I think will help you. Uh, if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, we'd love to get you more of this free content that'll be coming your way. So let's have a look at Ricky Fowler, and I'll be back to show you what I think you can do to make it apply to your game. So there's Ricky Fowler, terrific young player, he's 27 years old, 5 feet 9, at least he's listed at that, and of moderate build, 155 pounds or so, hits the ball a heck of a long way, and this guy's been a really, really good player for a long time now, played at Oklahoma State for a while, so let's have a look, see what he does well. One thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point out as we go that's maybe a little unconventional, I wouldn't recommend for the for the average golfer, but pretty much everything else, the more you could emulate it, the better off you'd be. So let's have a look. Here he goes. Let me just quick box him in. This is a nice steady camera angle with his body there. You can see he pushes into the ground a little bit as pretty much any dynamic hitter does. And he does something a little unusual here. You'll watch the logo on his hat sort of pull away from where it started. And I've looked at a few swings of him with irons and he does this a bit. You don't see that a lot with great players. But what you see that really makes makes up for it, if you like, watch his lower body. His hip gets nice and deep there. It's actually further back than it begun. And as he comes down, not only does he unwind beautifully with his lower body, but he keeps his lower body all the way back in here. And that gives him a lot of space there for his hands as he goes through. That is not easy to do, but it is highly preferable if you can do that. So. Ricky clears his lower body beautifully and really stays back in there and doesn't invade the spacing of the ball at all, notwithstanding that he backs up a little bit there. Now, in terms of things he's worked on with Butch Harmon, I don't know specifically firsthand, but I'm guessing here that one of them is the takeaway. He used to take the club much more out here like that. Uh, they've cleaned that up, and it looks great to me. His swing still has a tendency, though, to stay a little in front of him going back and correspondingly to lay off a little bit at the top, which of course is fine. Although for the average person, they may not hit the ball quite as far doing that as letting the club get online or maybe getting a little bit longer backswing than that. But it works really well for him. And he does it to such an extent that you would think his club might come a little over the top coming down. Of course, it doesn't really. Now, it, it slightly steepens in the downswing. You see it's steepening there. It's now on a steeper angle. And again, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that for the average golfer because they probably will come over the top. But he has such dynamic lower body action and is able to keep his wrist lag so well that it, it doesn't, in fact, cause him to come over the top. But I think it really protects from that classic, you know, elite player tendency of getting the club stuck in here and hitting pushes and hooks, and it seems to really guard against that for him. Tiger Woods, if you've listened to his press conferences over the years, talked a lot about trying not to get stuck, and he's referring to getting the club back here, which is often the trait of better players, so Ricky looks like he's never in danger of that. The club's in front of him there, it's a little laid off there, and it's back in front of him here, and obviously he's hitting the ball great. Let's have a look at him from here for a minute. The camera work on the iron isn't that great. It's sort of double ghosted there a bit, but we can see really, really simple dynamic body motion. Very difficult for the average person to turn that much, keep that much extension, and still stay that steady in the backswing. They're ideals, if you like, but the average person's probably going to need a little bit more of a soft left arm and a little bit more hip turn to do that. Notice how Ricky beautifully leads with his weight transfer to the left before his arms ever come down. And the secret to his power here, this is a hybrid, you can see that golf club's about by that guy's arm there. As he comes down with that great lower body motion, he dramatically increases his wrist angle. Look at the club there, and look at it there. So very good action here, very responsive wrist. I've talked about that quite a bit in the videos I've done, if you've watched some of those, and it's a key to power. 
So it's a classically good golf swing. Why don't we talk a little bit about what you might take away from it, what might be difficult to adopt, and we'll see if we can help you with a couple of ideas here. Okay, so great action there. Good fun to watch a talented young guy like that swing the club. A couple of things I think you might be able to take away from it. I mentioned from the face-on view what a nice job he does of keeping stable in his lower body, still making a good turn, and still keeping good extension. You need to find out for you, though, how much of that you can physically do. So, number one, make a couple of pivots and get a good full turn with relatively as little movement as you can and see how far you can go you need enough movement to let you get your back to the target. For me, that's about like that. And I can feel some stretch and some resistance. That's what I want to feel. I don't want to feel sloppy, but I can feel it's not overly restrictive. Now, grip the back of your lead wrist. No club. I'm a right-handed golfer, obviously. And as you do this now, push out a little bit with this right hand and keep this left arm nice and straight. Trying to keep our head still as well. And again, for me, if I keep my arm that straight, that's a little too restrictive for me. So I'm going to need to be a little bit softer, a little bit of movement down here, and I can kind of find that blend that's right for me where I've created resistance. I have some structure in my arm, but I can still complete my backswing. And you just have to play around with it a little bit to see what the recipe that's right for you is. Now, the other thing I said, and this is really important, I'm going to grab an alignment rod here. You see these all the time at golf courses. I'd mentioned that Ricky does a great job as he turns through dynamically, keeping his legs back. He does not push forward and invade that space. And that is such a hallmark of great ball strikers. So take the alignment rod, stick it in the ground, like so, towards the target, and just place it so your knees are up close to it like that. Now do this without a ball initially, and make a few soft swings and feel like you can stay within that line. Don't bump into the stick, in other words, there as you go. And just practice that a little bit, like so. You might hit a few little soft pitches or pitching wedges to work on that as well. Now, a word of caution, what I would not recommend and what you really got to avoid, don't in an attempt to stay back, just freeze your hips and push them backwards. If you do that, not only will your balance be bad, but worse still, you could hurt your back. Your lower lumbar back is not built to twist a lot. So if your hips freeze too much in an attempt to stay back, you can wrench your back a little bit. You have to be able to move freely, release that right hip and go. So we want to still be able to turn here, but we want to practice it so that we do it staying back in that area. Most of you are not going to be able to make a completely full finish without bumping into that, but we're at least talking through impact there, stay in that position so you wouldn't bump it as you hit the ball. Hope these thoughts are helpful for you. Again, subscribe to the channel. Would love to get you more of this free content. Scratchgolfacademy.com is my website. We'll see you another time.